All right, guys. Well, welcome so much. Welcome, welcome to the Multifamily Foundation Zoom. Uh, my name is Andrea Garcia. I've got a Vishkar presenting with us tonight, and we're hosting this uh, Multifamily Foundation series moving forward every two weeks after today. So it's every other Wednesday at 8.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, 5.30 p.m. Pacific Standard Time, which is where I'm at. Essentially, what we want to help you guys understand is what it takes to build your foundation in multifamily and how to structure your team, certain components involved in it. Today's agenda, we're going to describe a little bit more about the community, who we are. Um, I want to get to know a little bit more about you guys. We're going to do some introductions and then we're going to move on to the main topic, which is essentially team structure and how to find general partners in this game we call real estate. And then we're going to go move on to Q&A. So you guys have some time to um, ask me questions or ask a Vishkar, you know, moving forward. Okay. And, and just quick note, if anyone has questions throughout, uh, just drop a note in the chat. We'll do our best to be answering questions in the chat throughout. Uh, yes. but we, we may uh, call on you to unmute uh, if we uh, think your question uh, would benefit uh, everyone to hear. Yeah, definitely. I'm honestly not going to be too much on the lookout of the chat until after we're done discussing a little bit more about this, but uh, I've got my team helping me out with the chat. And like I said, you guys, please, you're welcome to be um, putting in your contact info, how long you've been in real estate, if you are investing in multifamily and what are your target markets or your buy box. That's always helpful for us to just help each other as a community. And I mean, you know, we're always here to actually understand, like, we're not in this alone. And that's why I joined this community, because I'm so excited to be part of the multifamily freedom chasers, that this is our community, and we understand why we're here. And that's part of the reason why we're, I'm going to describe these slides. First things first is you understand what part of the journey you're on. Some people, once they start finding a little bit more about multifamily, they're like, hey, this is not really for me. Thanks for the free education, but multifamily is way too much. I've met people like that before and it's okay. You know, everybody has their own niches and Airbnbs, you know, single family, and that's fine. Whatever works for you guys. There's also the second option, which is somebody that, that understands a little bit more about multifamily and they become a passive investor. So this person likes like, I love multifamily. Um, however, being an active operator, it's a lot more work than we anticipated. So I'd rather be a passive investor, maybe become a limited partner, just give some money. I'll be a key sponsor. Um, but at least now they know how to underwrite. And that's one of the essential uh, components of it. And that's part of my job. I, I do underwriting and we'll get a little bit more into that. And then the third uh, portion of this journey is that you are an active operator. You want to be a multifamily. So you love multifamily I, or apartment building investments or uh, whatever it is that is included in multifamily. But I know now that I want to be an operator and an investor, and I'm ready to further my education. Either way, these Zooms could actually help you guys a little understand a little bit more about that journey and where you're at. Let's see here. Okay, so part of this presentation is also describing what is the multifamily um, multifamily freedom chaser preferred partners program. Essentially, Marcel, Trevor, Victor, a couple of the main boys that started this community, they wanted to start with partnering with other teams to provide in-depth multifamily education, elite level underwriting, asset training, mindset coaching. Um, so if you check out the link or we can put the link in the chat and you can also book a call with Trevor to understand a little bit more about it, but they've partnered with these um, real leaders in multifamily to be able to provide you education at either an, a discounted price or maybe a special offer price. I'm gonna end the presentation because that way I can describe to you guys a little bit more about, um, just play the video really quickly. I think I might have it open here. Let's see. Oh, I did, here we go. Let's see here. All right. Hey, uh, Andrea. Andrea, yes. I'm, I'm here live and in person, so you don't have to deal with the digital oh, recording okay. of, of me saying the same thing. Yeah. 
Great job. Uh, Great job. I'm actually going to see yeah. we could highlight yeah. Mr. Trevor for a quick moment. Where are you at, Mr. Trevor? I'm cranking a little workout in before uh, it's, it's dinner time with the family. So, but, but just to explain the preferred partnership program really quick, you said it great. We invested tens and tens of thousands of dollars to level up ourselves. And we wanted to bring that type of resources back to the community at a discounted price. Whenever any freedom chasers within the community has tapped out all of our free resources and they're ready to invest in themselves to continue on their education and freedom chasing journey, tap into the preferred partnership program book a call with me to talk about it more. Back yes. to you, Andrea. Thank you so much. He could not have described it any better. <laughs> awesome. I'm going to go back to what we were discussing. And thank you so much, Trevor, for coming on. Uh, part of this journey, let me see if can you, you guys can see my screen, right? With yeah, the right stop place settings. <laughs> All right, part of the multifamily family community is that on Sundays we have an activation Zoom and usually the multifamily boys will let you guys know if there is a, an actual activation Zoom with really amazing guest speakers they have. I've been on a couple of those calls. Monday nights at 8 p.m. you've got broker talks with uh, Peter and Ed to just feel more at ease chatting with uh, brokers on the phone, what kind of questions to ask, what kind of lingo. You, you will definitely learn a little bit more about that. And then Tuesdays, you have your napkin underwriting Zoom with uh, Will, Aldo, and Ed. I think it alternates between those guys, but it's every Tuesday at eight. And then from now, and then on Wednesdays, you're going to see the fabulous Shelly and Jerry and how they can be able to help you guys with the multifamily financing. Because at the end of the day, we all need money to get started in multifamily and in this investment journey. And on Every other Wednesday, it'll be us at 8.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, just describing to you how to embark on your journey in multifamily. So I'm actually going to hit, well, actually, let me go back. Tell us a little bit more about you guys. I actually want to expand my view and understand if, uh, if you guys want to come on here and um, just tell us at what point, let me know if you guys have actually have a team. Does anybody on here have a team and, or who is looking for a team to get started in multifamily? Where are you guys at? I'm actually looking for a team. Um, I, since I'm just starting out and I am in New York, I just started off about two months ago, a little over two months, maybe I think. Um, I am still going through the four week foundational training. I had some personal stuff coming up with a new job and personal things. So I didn't get a chance to finish that off yet, but uh, I'm in week three of the foundational training, and I'm searching for people who are more experienced than me because the path that I feel that so far from what I've learned seems to suit me is acquisition side. So broker relations and deal sourcing is what I kind of want to focus on. So I need to find people who can who are very experienced with and knowledgeable with underwriting, market research, you know, investor relations, fundraising, so on and so forth, and obviously a sponsor, but or more than one sponsor. But I'm trying to put together a team that I can work with uh, and have great synergy with for the next, I guess, how however many years we keep the deal alive and potentially do other deals with them as well. That's great. Well, you're in the perfect spot, Ronald, because today we're actually going to talk about um, the team structure, right? And we're going to go deep into it so that everybody here can get a better understanding of what are the dynamics in the team and how you would find other partners that would work with you. So stick around. We're going to talk about all of that. Um, guys, if anybody here wants to partner up with Ronald, he's right here. Just share your contact with him, uh, meet up with him, talk to him, see how you guys can add value to each other, like we're doing in our team and like how the other boys are doing in their team. Thank you, Avish. Right, right I ahead. put my contact information in the um, in the chat. Andrea, I tried to look for you on Facebook to add you as a friend, but you weren't coming up for some reason. I don't know if it's uh, my Andrea name is a little too common. It's Andrea Garcia. <laughs> yeah, I was looking for you and I couldn't find you there, so I'm just you know, looking for you in the. I'll put in the chat um, just how to reach us or where to follow us. You know, on my Instagram, it's Andrea Garcia REI Avishkar. I believe it's the immigrant doctor. DR. Um, but we're going to put all, all our socials on the chat so you guys can, we can all connect with one another and, you know, book a call with us or what, whatever questions you guys might have. Is there yeah, any? Guys, raise you your guys? hands. Yeah. Don't yeah, feel shy. Raise your hands. Tell us. Mm -hmm. 
We have Sean Thompson has raised his hand. Can you unmute yourself, Sean? Yes, sir. How are you today? Thank you for having me on. I'm, I'm doing well. How are you doing? Doing very well. Thank you very much. Um, I'm in Knoxville, Tennessee. I've uh, I've been a GP on a deal, a GP on a deal, and I'm KPing a deal. And we just had a deal accepted in uh, Destin, Florida, for 120 units. And I'm leading my first syndication right now. So um, I'm looking for other people. I'm not really good at uh, at acquisitions and deal sourcing, but I'm a really good operator. I'm good at uh, underwriting and um, sourcing a little bit of money. Not a great money raiser. But I'm looking for other people to work with. So, um, and I can help KP your deal up to about twelve million dollars. I've got uh, about seventy units I run on my own, and we're developing about one hundred and twelve units right now. That is amazing, Sean. We gotta work, we gotta talk after this. Okay, <laughs> I think love we might to. be able to add value to each other. <laughs> yeah, would love to. Well, not only me, guys. I mean, I mean, right here you have somebody who's sitting with. Uh, who can KP your deal for $12 million. I mean, that's enough value in the Zoom. If you guys are just getting started, just you know, connect with other people who are in this Zoom because there are a lot of experienced people over here who can help you if you're new. And there's always something to add that you know, don't, don't feel that yeah, there's, there's no value that you can add to a particular team. Um, just try to find out how you can add value. And we'll go more into this uh, as we go on with the presentation. Uh, real quick, I, I know this might be a, bit of a novice question. When you say KP a deal, what does that mean? So he's, he's the key principal. So he's the, um, he brings in the net worth requirement for, uh, for, for the, uh, the banks to lend the money. That's very oh, okay. On a larger deal. If you're starting yeah. off in real estate and you don't exactly have a full team yet, or maybe you do have a team, but they're not worth the loan amount that you're requesting from the lender. It's very important to partner with a key principal to be able to either be worth the loan amount or at least bring some experience. But some key principles don't uh, help you fundraise. They don't help you with capital raising. I think uh, Sean's very, his introduction was perfect. It was honest. I, I know he's a perfect introducer because it's under a minute and he gets straight to the point of how he wants to add value to people and how he is providing value to you guys. So like I said, keep networking in the chat. Um, let's see, Dana. We're going to keep it under a minute for, uh, we're just going to do two more people and okay. you know, we'll move on afterwards for Q and A. Uh, yeah, I'm Dana Jones. Um, I've been in a single family space for a while. So I invest in single family in Los Angeles, also over the East coast. I also do the lending for multifamily and my wife does the residential portion. I'm getting into multifamily because I love it. So I'm, I'm trying to actually form a team for Sean. I want to give you a call as well too, pretty much. So I can bring it value. I can do capital raising and also do the operations portion. And I've been in real estate for like 20 years. So hopefully that's under a <laughs> That's perfect. 20 years, Dana? Oh my God, you look like you're in your 20s when I saw you last time. <laughs> Thanks, man. Thanks. <laughs> you said my birthday party. <laughs> God is good. Thank you so much for coming on and introducing yourself. It takes a lot of courage, you guys, to just come on and say hi to people and, you know, just un- Turn on your camera, even if you're driving. I know it's not ideal, but like you could always have us in the background. We just want to see your faces and really get to know you versus like a blacked out screen. All right. Um, does one more person want to come on and just say hi for about a minute? Or we can move on. What do you guys prefer? Yeah, I'll introduce myself. Okay. Yeah. That's a company. Uh, I'm a Michigan investor. I said I'd, I put it in the chat. Uh, my contact info, but uh, yeah, I've been doing uh, small investments. I got a lot of duplexes, a fourplex. Did a couple of uh, rehabs on uh, single before interest rates went crazy and dumped that into a bunch of other syndicated deals. So I got some LP experience as well. Um, but I'm looking for some GP opportunities. Uh, might even scale back my portfolio so I can have uh, a little more free time than I got today because I do a lot of the work myself to uh, try and keep the cash flow going. I quit my day job a couple of years ago. So that is pretty incredible, Edward. Wow. You quit your day job and now you're full time multi, like investing in real estate. That's few people can say that. Yep. That's amazing. Yeah. That's great. Thanks. Thanks for coming on. I appreciate it. 
Um, just as a quick reminder, you guys, I put in the chat our Instagram handles. You can also see replays of this Zoom in the future on YouTube when we, it gets uploaded. And of course, our amazing team could be able to upload it and make it available to you guys. But like I said, this is actually the best time to be here so we can have live interaction with one another and just have a good time here. It's not as scary as you think. All right, I'm gonna move on to sharing my screen again and hopefully this time it'll go full, full mode. All right, let's see here. Now I got a handle of this, here we go. All right, disclaimer, we are not attorneys, financial advisors or tax advisors or otherwise. The purpose of this series is for informational purposes only. Before making any investment decision, you should definitely consult with your financial advisor or personnel. As just a quick reminder to you guys, whatever we say, it's just for informational purposes only. All right, all right. So we are now gonna get into the meat of this. We are going to talk about what it actually entails in a multifamily team. Like it's a big, it's a complex structure, right? There are multiple facets, multiple moving parts. Um, into uh, when you get into the GP structure. So basically GP are the general partners. They are the operating partners of, of a team. And uh, the way I look at it is you need essentially four critical components. Now there are some other components that are other, other services that you can hire out, but within the core team, you need four, four key things. A, you need money. So you need a capital raiser. You need somebody who can understand the numbers and underwrite, so that's the underwriter. There's somebody who can manage the assets. So, and the number four, and that's actually one of the, the first thing that needs to happen is the lead generator, the person who will actually talk to the brokers, bring you the deals. So, so let's move on and kind of take a deep dive into what, what are the roles and how just take, you know, explain this a little further for you guys. All right. So we're talking to talk about capital raising. So for my team, I am the capital raiser, right? So I am the money man. Well, so the way it works is. Um, capital raising itself has its own nuances, but simplistically, any particular deal that you do will require some money to bring in, right? Uh, whether if you've in, invested in single family or small multifamily, you know that some of the money the bank brings in and some of the money you have to bring in. Well, the beauty of uh, large multifamily is that a lot of times you may not have your, you know, enough capital to fund a deal, or you may not want to use your own capital to fund the entirety of the deal, right? So you bring in a few investors with a common interest that they want to invest in that particular deal. They want to get the returns with you. And so you pull them together and then they invest with you, right? Or they invest in your deals. So the role of a capital raiser is to talk to these people, um, can constantly network. And so let's just dive into what is the personality type that you require for this. It has to be somebody who's very outgoing. It, you cannot be sitting behind a computer and hoping that people will just land into your, into your email list or land into your network and, and you'll get money. No, it is a very high touch uh, high touch uh, job, so to say, for the GP team, right? You have to constantly network with new people. You have to constantly keep meeting people because you have to develop those relationships. You have to be able to not only meet new people, you also have to sustain those relationships. And one of the key ways that you can sustain relationships is by telling stories. And I'm not saying that you go ahead and make up stories and tell them. But what I'm trying to say is, you got to convert your facts into a way that people will understand. Inherently, humans love stories. We all love stories. I'm, I'm sure you've had, you know, you've seen so many movies that are all stories that are told, right? So you have to be good at telling stories to the investors. You have to paint the entire picture. If you're not good at that, you'll have a hard time raising capital. And the third, the third thing is you have to be very well connected. And like I said, you have to be sort of an extrovert, outgoing, constantly talking to people, constantly networking. Again, sales experience, you may or may not have sales experience, but that's one of the skills that you have to develop over time. A lot of times people think that, you know, they're a bond salesman or they're not a bond salesman and they will not be able to fit in this. Well, I was never a bond salesman, right? I had to learn these skills and these skills are learnable. You just have to put in the effort then you have to be able to have those difficult conversations. Like we're seeing in these times, a lot of the large multifamily deals are having capital calls. 
the good capital raisers will have those difficult conversations, will have those open conversations with their investors. If you do not have conversations with your investors in the difficult times, you will have a very hard time raising money in the good times because that is about credibility, that is about integrity. You have to act very responsibly and you have to make sure that your investors' interests are actually above the GP interests. The best of the best in this industry who are raising capital or who are doing deals, they always keep their investors' interests above their own interests. They do it for the love of it, for the love of the game, but the investors come first. So, um, so I am the capital raiser for our team, and I'm also the team lead. And you know, technically, everybody in the in the team has to be chip in, right, for raising capital. But there has to be somebody who is the go-to person because uh, you need one person who the investors can connect with, who they can relate with. Uh, the flip side of this is also true that not every investor that you get will be able to relate with the capital raiser, right? And that's why we have our own unique personalities. We have our own unique circles. So that's why it's important that when you have a team, everybody raises capital. Let's go to the next slide, Andrea. All right, let's talk about underwriters. So, you know, Andrea is our underwriter and she's really the brains of all of this, right? Um, if I'm the fluff and talking about raising capital and, you know, developing the vision, she's really, she really works the numbers and makes sure that the deals make sense for us, right? Uh, she does a very deep market analysis. We have done a market analysis for our markets that we are targeting. We have seen what, you know, what the projected um, economy is like over there. We've seen what are the number of units that are coming into the market. We're seeing what's the projected population growth in that, in that market. So that's all done by the underwriter. They have to be able to understand the financials of a building. As, after all, we are buying a business. So the underwriter's role is to understand the financials of the business. The third thing is to build a business plan. You need to know how you're going to run the business, right? You need to know how your numbers are making sense. When you're running numbers in a model that you, you know, that you use to underwrite, it's very easy to tweak numbers and make hypothetical numbers there and, you know, make the, the underwriting look pretty. But that's the job of the underwriter to figure out if they're real or not. That, you know, you can, you can do whatever with the numbers and even small changes in any underwriting can make big differences, right? So you need to make sure that the numbers that you're putting in are accurate. And that's the job of the underwriter. So you have to very be, be very careful when you're actually taking those numbers into account. Make sure you're double, double, you know, checking twice, thrice before you actually go ahead and put this out to the investors, because at the end of the day, it's the investor's money that's kind of come at, you know, it's at stake. So the other thing that is very, very important for an underwriter and for any business model, especially in multifamily, is having the exit in mind. Whenever a good multifamily is underwritten, a good team underwrites, they always write with the exit in mind. If you do not know what your exit is, you cannot have a proper business plan for that. Because the reason why I say that is very simple. Um, you know, a lot of times in single single family homes, when you buy, you get a 30 year mortgage, right? But in multifamily, when you're buying commercial commercial properties, the loan may be amortized over 25 years, 30 years, whatever. But a lot of times you have uh, you have a balloon payment at 10 years, seven years. So you need to make sure, and this is just for the long, you know, when you're buying the longest term that you can get. Sometimes, like people did, they bought uh, they got loans with variable rates. So for, for, for any business, you need to understand how these levers are going to move and who's going to control those levers and how is your business poised so that your business does not go under when these levers move. That's the job of the underwriter. Now, I know that Andrea is more of an extrovert, but usually, usually um, the underwriter will be an introvert does not want to get involved, you know, with, with, the, with what the capital raiser is do, doing, does not have any interest in interacting with people. They're happy sitting in front of their computers and crunching the numbers. They have to love numbers, but they, they again have to be very diligent. They have to have that keen eye to make sure that they're not missing anything. They're not the big picture people. They're the small picture people so that they can catch those small changes, small nuances right? They have to be able to recognize patterns and the disruptions in those patterns, because that's what's going to make the difference. And that lastly, they have to be able to finish these tasks in a timely manner. 
So they have to be very proficient in what they're doing, right? When I started out in this industry, I'll give you my example. I thought that I would be good at underwriting, which, you know, which I can do fairly well. We've had our discussions and, you know, our understanding of how to underwrite and not to do that. But then I realized that it's not for me to do. And that's okay. And that's the beauty of multifamily that you may not want to do something or you may not be good at something, but there's somebody else that you can find who's good at that because it's a team effort and everybody works together. So, so that's the role of, um, you know, of the underwriter. Let's go on to the next piece, uh, Andrea. All right, we come to asset manager. So our asset manager is Drew and he's also the integrator for our team, right? He, he runs our meetings. Um, he keeps us in check because me being the capital raiser and the extrovert and the visionary, I try to go off track. And so he kind of reins us all in and makes sure everything moves smoothly. So he's very good at managing teams. He's very good at managing other people. So, so he's our asset manager. The role of an asset manager is to execute on the business plan that the underwriter and the capital raiser have kind of put together. So um, if I may just go back a little bit, Andrea and I work closely because she underwrites. I have to make sure that that's going to satisfy what my investors want for their deals, right? I have to make sure you can, so it's a kind of kind of sales 101. You can have an Apple, the best Apple in the world that you want to sell, but if the market asks for an orange, that Apple is worth nothing, right? So the underwriter can do the best underwriting possible, but then if that's not what the market is wanting, then it means nothing, right? That, that asset is of no value to my market. So Andrea and I work closely to make sure that the numbers make sense, make sure that it's going to satisfy our investors' needs. So the asset manager's role is to actually make sure that after all of this business plan has been laid down, the asset actually performs. The asset says, you know, it does what it's supposed to do based on the business plan. Now, keep in mind, this business plan, when it's laid down, uh, in terms of specifics, say you're talking about the rents that you're going to get in terms of the property, uh, the management fees, in terms of you know the other third party services that you're going to uh, you're going to hire to to run the assets, say cleaning, whatever have you, the asset manager's role is that everything's working according to plan. So they have once the acquisition part of it is done, the role of the asset manager comes in. The asset manager talks about how to run the business properly. And I think Drew is the perfect person for that in our team because he does run a great team in his own, in his day job as well. Um, what you need for this is somebody who can lead a team who has, who understands how that works, right? Who understands um, the, the, the dynamics of the team, who understands interpersonal relationships, who has some experience in property management. Now you may or may not have it, but uh, you know, if you have some experience, it helps certainly. They have to be goal-oriented and they have to be able to give follow-ups in a timely manner. And lastly, I would say that one skill that's going to help that really differentiates good asset managers from you know, the average ones is the ability to look at that data that you're getting or the past data that you've gotten and to analyze and understand if there's a problem or where the problem is or to anticipate problems that may occur based on the data that you're getting. And once you have an analyzed that, you anticipate those problems, you can risk mitigate or mitigate those problems even before they crop up. Uh, next slide, Andrea. Another note is that anybody on your team, guys, it's very important that, you, that they all know how to underwrite. I mean, I've been in underwriting for almost six years now and everybody on the team needs to know, the asset manager, the capital raiser, the... Um, the broker talk person, you know, whoever's in charge of broker relations or asset management, they have to know how to underwrite. So it's very important for you guys to get your skills tidied up, especially when it comes to napkin underwriting too. And you can learn about yeah, on Tuesdays as well. Yeah. And, and Sean, you know, Sean um, said it very right. Your asset manager can actually make or break your deal. If you, you may yes. have the best property, you may have, you know, a property in, in uh, downtown LA that's a phenomenal deal when you bought it, but if it's not managed properly, it may be a bummer, really. It, it, it's so crucial to have a good asset manager that it's, you know, it, it can make or break your business. 
All right, I'll move on to the lead generator. Andrea, Andrea, lead Andrea generator. when you're doing your underwriting, are you using the um, spreadsheet tool that MFM provides for us or are you using something else? Uh, there's a couple different sheets. If you want, I can um, answer your question a little bit more towards the end, but there's different underwriting tools available. Let me actually exit out of here. And uh, uh, Andrea, let's basically. keep it to the end. Yeah, let's, let's keep, keep the, the questions end. to the Yeah, let's my, just continue with this and let's keep it. No worries, yeah, no keep, worries. Let's, that's let's, okay, man, that's okay. We'll, we'll definitely <laughs> answer your question. We'll definitely answer your question. So Last the part. next role is of the lead generator. So, you know, this is actually the basic role, right? So you need to have assets to buy. If you don't have anything, the rest of it falls flat on their face, right? Like we're just sitting here wasting time if we don't have uh, an asset to, to buy, right? So the lead generator, again, is usually a person who's going to be local to a particular market so that they have those deeper relationships within that market with the brokers, uh, with either wholesalers, if you're looking for smaller assets, larger assets usually will come in with the commercial brokers, right? They have to have a clear understanding of your buy box because that's the first question a commercial broker will ask. What is your buy box? What are you looking for? And the answer cannot be, I'm looking for multifamily. Because when you say I'm looking for multifamily, they will never answer back and they will never call you back because you have to give them a very, very clear answer, very clear, distinct criteria. It's like going to somebody in single family and saying, I'm looking for a house. That means nothing to anybody. So understanding the buy box, explaining the buy box to the brokers is very important. I would say uh, the other thing for lead, the lead generator is that they have to understand underwriting at least at the basic level, if not at, a, at an advanced level. And the reason being, a broker can send you a lot of deals, but whether it's going to be a good deal for somebody to do an in-depth underwriting on or not, that has to be you know, decided at the outset. That has to be decided right at the beginning, whether it's worth our time or not. So understanding some of the metrics that are prevalent in the market, like what's the average rate per door, right? What, what's the cap rate this, this building is at? Some of these things can help um, the lead generator, uh, you know, sift through the noise and look at the assets that make sense. The important thing is having this deep knowledge of the local market. That's why Antoine is our local uh, local expert in Columbus, right? He lives in Columbus. He knows the neighborhoods inside out. He knows the real estate folks inside out. Like he knows he's in every real estate circle uh, in, in Columbus. He's the go-to guy in Columbus. Like everybody in Columbus knows Antoine in real estate. So so having those deep relationships can bring you deals that may not normally come to the market, right? When I've, so I have uh, some, uh, some assets in Columbus. Um, two of them were actually off-market deals that came to me. They never hit the market. I got them off-market. So you need to have those connections. Absolutely. Um, the important thing is that you need somebody who's going to talk sweet, okay? Because you need somebody who can negotiate with the broker, right? You do not need somebody who's going to come across strong because you need that relationship. You need the broker to understand your point of view when the deal is underwritten and it's not, say, it's not making sense. So it's the job of the lead underwriter to uh, lead generator to, um, you know, talk about why it's not making sense to the broker, explain to them that this is not working. And the goal is actually to find a solution. At the end of the day, we're in this business of buying properties. So the goal is not to impede us, you know, not to impede this process of buying properties, but, but to find these potential solutions to this problem. Okay, if this is not working, how can we work around this? Say you want to bring in some creative financing, you know, thinking outside the box. That is the goal of, uh, of a lead generator. That's the way a lead generator needs to operate. Okay, I'll move on to the next one because we only have a few minutes left and just getting to the point of why you guys are here. Where do you find your team? First off, the chat. <laughs> Networking is the name of the game in this business, guys. And it's hard for me too, because I'm naturally an introvert, but I've had to push myself out of my own comfort level to be able to go to events like in-person, virtual, multifamily events. It's very critical for you guys to have even a digital business card, but a physical one is fine too. You know, at least let leave behind your impression of why you are at these events and make, make it known that, you're there for a reason and you want to 
be able to meet people who you can form this type of a team with. But the first things first is understanding who you are as an individual and what type of role you feel comfortable you could take on. There's also mentorships. There's VIP ticketed event strategies that I've been to. I've, I've Usually when I go to events, I like to hit buy the VIP ticket because you meet different levels of individuals who buy those VIP tickets. There's online accountability classes. Some of you are in sub two or raising private money, raise masters, whatever it is. There's all kinds of groups that will keep you accountable and boot camp classes. So um, there's meetups in person. If you're not really feeling up to meeting so many people, at least you leave a good impression behind, that would be a referral. And there's other real estate focused groups. But first things first is you for sure need to let people know what you do. And that's been the hardest part for me, honestly, as, as a real estate investor that has done this and has grinded for years about how to underwrite and how to do comps, due diligence, you name it. Um, it's just letting people know what you do. And essentially, we're just finishing this off with letting you know who we are. Um, we joined multifamily uh, Freedom Chaser community because we want to be able to provide you back information of what we never learned in the beginning and how we can help you guys invest in your futures as well. Uh, Avish Kar, you heard him. He's a physician. He's the, actually the team lead in investor relations. He's a physician, multifamily investor, host of the Immigrant Doctor podcast. I've been an underwriter for a while, uh, about six years now, and in my focus has been primarily in affordable housing. And uh, mostly the assets I've helped purchase have been over 100 units. So everything involved with underwriting, the due diligence, the comps, you name it. And then I also love to educate you guys because <laughs> once you get in this business, you're thrown into the sharks, especially with multifamily. So it's very important and critical for you guys to feel comfortable and feel like you can trust your team you're building. Drew is our head of operations and asset management. Antoine is also our head of broker relations, tax strategist, and all around badass dad. <laughs> He's, a lot of these people that are in our team, we've met, um, I think it was about less than a year ago. And essentially it's, we strive to help people understand a little bit more about multifamily and how they can reach financial independence, because it is incredible when you can see those huge distribution checks come your way every quarter or every six months. I mean, it's possible to get distribution checks that are over a hundred thousand or a million. It just depends on your investment strategy. Now we're actually going to open it up to Q and A because I like to get, I like to be able to get in the weeds of it. <laughs> Is there any questions you guys might have for us? And feel free to raise your hands when you're doing the Q&A. If you guys know how to raise your hands, um, or if you don't know how to raise your hands, let me actually stop the sharing. Oh, we, ha we have somebody here who has a question. Oh, okay. Looks, okay. looks like a new investor here. Uh -huh. Oh, who is this new investor? <laughs> a new investor is called Marcel from Germany. <laughs> How's it going, hey. Marcel? Good, good. Hey, you guys did a great job. Very, very great professional presentation. And I don't really have a question for you, but I have a question for everybody else. Did you guys get some value out of this? And uh, are you happy that the team is coming on here and now sharing a bunch of stuff about how to get started foundations? If so, throw some fires or whatever, something in the chat and showcase that to the team because we want to make sure they continuously come back every other week here to bring that uh, to the community. And I wanna say thanks to you as well. This was awesome and I can't wait for more. Thank you so much, Marcel. I appreciate you always engaging the audience. I've learned a lot from you. <laughs> <laughs> Breaking out of that shell, let people know what you're about, you know? We're not in this exactly. alone, guys. <laughs> oh, I see Peter. You put on Peter. Don't let him fool you, he is a new investor. Oh, he is a new investor. <laughs> you know, he's been he's been around the block a few times with the single family stuff, but most of us are pretty new to the uh, to the multifamily game. So, um, you know, I shoot, I bought my first subject two house in two thousand two, I think it was, but I'm brand new to multifamily, so pretty excited about it. I I'm like Marcel, I don't have a question. I just welcome to the team, guys. I'm thrilled to see you guys doing this. I look forward to the more of your Zooms and appreciate the value that you 
offer to the community tonight. I hope they take your advice and they connect with each other and they do the things we tell them to do every week because this is this is where you find your teams. I mean, I'm blown away every time I come to another Zoom and see the value, the quality of people that are in these rooms. It, it's amazing. So if you're trying to learn about multifamily, you're in the right place. Keep showing up. Keep coming back. All right, we have Michael Hawkins. Hey, have a scar. You can't call me Michael Hawkins, man. You got to call me the Hawk. <laughs> the Hawk. <laughs> Come on. Come How on. are you doing, Come man? On. I'm doing good. How are you, man? Doing? How you doing? Good, man. Good, good, good. 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 good to see Good, good to see you on here, man. Impart knowledge, man, to uh, some new multifamily investors. You know, I, I've been uh, an investor for about 15 years, started out in, in single family. And a lot of the things, you know, on here, like these principles, man, are, you know, really important for people to grasp because a lot of people get get uh, bogged down by the information up front, right? And it's thinking be daunting, right? And what happens is analysis paralysis, right? So when you break it down this simple, I think everyone who's new to, to multifamily and, and I see a lot of faces I don't recognize, I see a lot of faces I do recognize, right? A lot of friends, you know, definitely take this information down, absorb it, and then start building on top of it, right? And then the key is to show up. Show up every night, you know, these guys, you know, Abascar, uh, Marcel is over there. He 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 plays like he's, he's a rookie, but he's one of the veterans in this space and teaching the game. So my brother, Peter, Jerry, uh, Shelly, I see you on here uh you know just a lot of great people a lot of great people on here and i and i've jumped on some of these calls and and tried to help the, the team out see victor on here so i don't want to forget victor but i jumped on a lot of these calls just to impart some knowledge as well just to add on and, and support the the team when you find teams like this you gotta stay plugged in because you never know who you'll meet you'll never know what team you'll form and then you never know what your role will be right as you start to you know learn this thing a little bit more so um thank you avishar uh thank you andrea drew um, I know Marcel's behind this, Antoine, you know, you guys are great. So just keep doing what you're doing and, 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 and please pay attention if you guys are new. Thank you. Thanks so much, Michael. All right, we have Coinda. Hopefully she can un show yes, us her video. Hello, Hello everyone. How are you doing? Hi, how's it going? Hi. Good, good. Thank you. Hey, a question. Mm -hmm. um, I'm not sure how to describe it, but you know, there's like a subgroup, the race capital, and there's like the main, um, how would I say, the main members of the main management team, syndication team. How does that work? And did you recommend investing with the sub team or did, I'm, I'm, not, I'm still trying to understand how that works. So I think, um... So there are different ways this works, right? It's a little more nuanced in terms mm -hmm. of uh, of how the sub teams work or how it's structured. I'm not quite sure what you're talking about, but my guess is you're talking about a co-GP structure or a fund of fund structure. And I think it it doesn't matter how you invest if you're on the limited partner side. If you're investing mm -hmm. passively, it's really about who's running the deal. So the important thing is to, to actually vet the person who's bringing the deal to you, right? Uh, make sure that you've done a background check on them. We've had these discussions in our, our team calls that we mm -hmm. wanna make sure that everybody has a clean background. Make sure that you understand the deal numbers, right? Somebody who's a vetted operator, actually I was on LinkedIn today and um, I mm -hmm. was actually replying to responding to a post Somebody who is a vetted operator, who knows what they're doing, who has the experience, but brings you a vanilla deal, by vanilla I mean offering you like standard returns or low returns, is much better than somebody who's very new. And by investor, I mean a group of investors. We always invest as a team, right? So it's always important to have somebody who's very fairly experienced on your team um, so that everybody feels more comfortable, right? They have seen the downturns, upturns in the market. Somebody's offering you a very high return, but they don't have a team that has the experience. I would shy away from that. I would say that, yeah, sure, they look amazing. The returns look amazing, but my money is at risk, is at a higher risk. And there's no right or wrong. 
right? There's no right or wrong. I'm not here to give you investment advice. I'm just saying this is what I would do. But what I would certainly recommend is vet the operators that you're investing with. So it doesn't matter whether it's you're investing with a co-GP or whether you're investing with a, the GP or whether you're investing in the fund. You got to make sure that the person that's um, that you're investing with has a good track record, has a clean background, and knows what they're doing. Gotcha. Again, this is not financial advice. Please don't take it as financial advice. This is just education. I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> I'm just here to provide education. <laughs> That's the best way to save yourself. I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> I feel like uh, just to hang on to what he was saying, there's a general partnership team, right? There's a general partners of a team. And then you're asking if, what's the difference between general partners and limited partners? Is that what you're asking, Coinda? Um, no, uh, it's just more like, um, you know, like let's say you guys are like purchasing a hundred units, right? for example, but there's a sub team that are raising capital and they have a different name, let's say um, MM name, but initially you're investing in the same, in the same uh, units, but uh, there's a subgroup within the, um, that syndication group that are raising capital. Okay, I feel like that's definitely what Mitch Carr was talking about, like a fund to funds type yes. of right. model. And then they would be part of the, um, G it could work out in different ways. Like Mitch Carr said, they could either be part of the capital raising GP equity split, depending on the deal, or they can come in as a limited partner with a, um, a small uh, GP equity split. So, and then there's other ways too. It just depends on how you structure it. But like I, I think like Avishkar said before is talk to your tax advisor, syndication attorney, for sure. We're going to go more in depth, um, but yeah. let me, I'll go back to the presentation right now, just so we can close this out because we only have four minutes left and we don't, we want to make sure you guys go back to your dinners and your families. Okay. Coinda, <laughs> just one out? last, uh, uh, Andrea, just one last thing for Coinda and, uh, what is your concern? I want to understand what your concern is because I think uh, that's the the best way to answer your question. Yeah, I think the main question is since I'm brand new to this, I want I was trying to understand what's the difference. Why would they be a subgroup? Is it because they're trying to raise more capital? Or yeah, probably because you know uh, it may be that everybody has a different network, like I'd mentioned, right? So we may need to collaborate with other people who have a different network to bring in the capital, right? So exactly. they have their own set of investors. That doesn't mean that it's an inferior way of doing things. It's just another way of doing things. It's like somebody likes vanilla ice cream, somebody likes chocolate ice cream. In regards to your return of investment, when they present it with the same rate, does it change? Because I know that the it's, main- that's a, I, I understand your question. And that's a very hard question to answer because there are mm -hmm. a lot of nuances that go into the underwriting. And there are a lot mm -hmm. of new, like there are a lot of different things. And, and you're, I understand your question because it seems almost seems like the returns may not be the same if you're investing mm -hmm. with somebody else. But I can tell you that there are ways that the returns can be same or higher because of the way the underwriting is done. So it's it's a very nuanced question and it depends on how you're underwriting the deal. And so it, I, I wouldn't be able to answer that question for you directly, but I can say that you can get similar returns even that way. Yeah, thank you so much, Avishkar and Koenda for your questions and answers. No, thank you. Thank so I just you. wanna remind everybody who's on this Zoom, um, if you're on a computer, feel free to go into the chat. There's like the little dot, dot, dot there and you can actually save the chat. That's one of the benefits of being on this live. Save the chat and you can be able to, or at least copy paste some information if you do wanna continue networking with each other, forming a team with one another, maybe ask each other questions of how, what values you guys share, what vision you have for your investing future. And just save the chat and see if you guys can connect later because I know this is only an hour of presentation. Uh, I do wanna go into the last part of the presentation, which is just like a quick, maybe three minutes or two minutes actually. That's it. What's next? All right, going back, next topic that we're describing is two weeks from now. Next topics, multifamily foundations is how to build a team with general partners. We just discovered today how to find them, networking events, meetups, uh, mentorships. I mean, you can go to the gym and meet people, just tell them what you do. 
<laughs> but how to build a team with general partners. And then the two weeks after that in September, we're gonna be educating a little bit more about third-party team coordination, which is my specialty. Whenever we go under contract for a property, the due diligence that it's involved and who should be on your team before you get that property under contract, that is very critical. So we're gonna keep going more and more in depth, but of course, multifamily, it starts with the people. Who you get to know, how you get to know them, if you share values, and essentially how you see your financial future working out. I chose multifamily because I love my weekends. <laughs> I love traveling and helping my family. Um, there's just so many reasons why you are in this community and why we all share the same vision for one another to help in each other grow and move forward. Like I said, if you guys want, uh, tune in Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, alternating Wednesdays. And I'm pretty sure there's going to be another uh, leader coming on soon. You'll find out more in the future, but tune in to us every, every other Wednesday. I also, want to leave on Sunday. Oh, go ahead. No, no, go ahead. Finish this. Then I'll, I'll leave them with a, with something. Okay. <laughs> this Sunday uh, we have on five o'clock, Pacific Standard Time, eight o'clock Eastern, um, our multifamily activation Zoom with Marcel, Trevor, Victor, and pretty much all of us. If you guys have time, tune in and uh, listen to Rod Khalif. He's a master in multifamily. And if you guys at any point, feel free to take snapshots of this presentation so you guys don't forget. And register too. That's what's important about this is register and get the reminders of this. But I just want to... Um. Thank you guys so much for coming on. We're not done, by the way. <laughs> if you guys want to stay on here, I want to remind you guys that you're on the right track. Whatever you're doing, just keep interacting with one another. You can reach out to us on our social medias. I have Instagram and Facebook. I have a lot of people requesting me. So give me time, maybe like a 24-hour turnaround. Um, and Avish Kar too. He's a whiz at this capital raising. Fund to funds, questions, you name it. But we're here to help each other and support one another. Avish Carl, put it to you. All right, guys. So I want to leave you with one thing, and that is uh, whoever's new to this game, I want you to go back and introspect on what are your qualities, what personality type do you fit in before you decide what role you're going to play in that team. Because that's the first thing that you need to do. Your personality has to align with the role. So that's all that I want to leave you with. And once you've done that, then you find the right partner. Because a lot of times, um, I've had a lot of people talk to me about raising capital and uh, they think it's very lucrative. It's very flashy because you're dealing with money. But trust me, it's, it's a lot more scary than it sounds. It's a lot harder than it sounds. And uh, it's a lot more difficult. I mean, sure, it's fun. I like it, interacting with people, but it's, it's a lot harder. That's it. It's a wrap. Thank you so much, guys. Like One I more said, thing. let's get oh. as many cameras on as possible. Let's take a picture. That's and if you right. Got, if you got value out of this tonight, please share it on your social media. Yes. If you got value out of this, actually, what I would really like is if you guys want to post in the multifamily freedom chaser community what you learned tonight. Maybe four things you learned tonight. <laughs> and I want everybody to smile. Cheers. Nice. Love it. Awesome. Share my guys, follow us. Guys. Follow Make us on social, social media. Yeah, hit us up on Instagram. If you have questions, reach out to us. Follow us on social media. And uh, we'll see you again in two Wednesdays. Thanks, Thank guys. you guys. Thanks, <laughs> Thanks everyone. Thank Great show. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. This was really helpful. <laughs>